and the, you know, just to kind of say what I just said in a slightly simpler way, I think basically this is going to come down to the sweepers. If Tom has a reasonable draw, Josh probably isn't going to be able to survive without some sort of a sweeper. So that's sort of the thing that you're going to want to look for on Josh's side of the table. If the board does get gummed up, Tom can go pretty big uh, with his creatures, uh, specifically Thousand Tenant, and always watching can, you know, pump his guys up so they can push through blockers. But also Griff Spoon is going to be one of the ways that he can, you know, push damage. Well, Tom's just going to lead off here with an Expedition Envoy. Josh Grace does have a Needle Spires and passing the turn back. Tom, for only having 18 lands in his deck, he has four in his main deck, which is quite a f four in his hand, which is quite a few. Hopefully he doesn't draw any more. That Expedition Envoy is going to get in for two damage, take Josh Grace down to 18. He's going to fire back with a Sylvan Advocate, though. This is going to play some really good defense if Tom doesn't have something like Always Watching to buff his team. Yeah, Always Watching would be the perfect thing to play here. Tom really doesn't want to blow a uh, Declaration in Stone this early, but he does want to keep attacking. So I have to imagine that he's going to commit more power and toughness to the board in some shape or form, where there's just more creatures or no always watching. But uh, Tom is Stone Cold Master, and he'll, he'll just always make the best play. Yeah, he figures it out. It's, it's funny watching him play, because he, he does a lot of things where he'll like, fan his hand out and then close it up and sit and look and then fan his hand out and then close it up and sit and look and yeah, I know from from testing through all the and, I, and I know from testing with Tom and playing against him in videos and such mm -hmm. it's just like you're waiting like come on man I know yeah. you have the best play already let's <laughs> yeah. go ahead and crush me with it there and, we go and here we have a Kithion a Thalia's lieutenant gonna pump his team he's gonna be able to attack through well not through this uh, Sylvan Advocate but give him the option of trading if he wants yeah, to yeah she's definitely gonna take the trade Advocate's going to trade off with that uh, Expedition Envoy. Tom still has a pretty sizable board here, and Josh is going to take three points of damage and drop down to 15. Yeah, Thalia's Lieutenant plus Kithion is certainly much better than always watching. So Tom is off to just a great start. Josh, to his credit, uh, played one of the best, like so far he's played his best possible draw. It doesn't really get much better for him than turn to Sylvan Advocate, but he's uh, way behind, and again, without a sweeper, all Tom needs is a reasonable draw, and things are going to go pretty bad for him, or pretty well for him, excuse me. This is one of those ways that the, these aggressive green decks or white decks can just punish everybody else when they're on the draw. Like, your deck is just set up to use all of your mana every turn in the first yeah. few turns, and not everybody's deck is set up to do that. Right. So, so, like, here we see... You know, he's played a one mana spell, a two mana spell, and then a two and a one mana spell. So he's used, he's used all six mana available to him over the course of three turns, which is real important. Yeah, and the fact that Tom got to play uh, a spell on turn one and then two spells on turn three means that despite Josh having a good hand where he played essentially on curve, he's still quite far behind. All right, so Josh was able to find a planes off of that uh, Oath of Nyssa lets him cash in that Declaration in Stone on a Naya of the White Orchid. Going to give Tom a clue, but Tom's able to just fire back with a Dragon Hunter and a Knight of the White Orchid. Going to grow that Thalia's Lieutenant and just relentlessly keep attacking. Yeah, quite the savage beating. This a Radiant Flames yeah. would be perfect here. So this is a good spot for a Radiant Flames. Nyssa, not so much. Yeah, fortunately, <laughs> we just have Nyssa, yeah. Vastwood Seer. It's going to get another play or another forest for Josh Grace, but that is really not going to do much. I wonder if this will be one of the big themes of today's people playing mid-range decks built to beat other mid-range decks and then people looking to take advantage of that, you know? Well, when we were when we first sat sat down and we got to see the players behind them at the other feature matches, mm -hmm. I saw Jerry Thompson. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what Jerry's playing because if Jerry is on an aggressive white deck, that probably would was a good call for the weekend. Yeah, probably. Jerry's pretty good at choosing a deck. Right, so Josh just has that Nissa. He's going to play Cinderglade, untapped, and then pass the turn. Tom's going to cash in that clue now just to see what kind of options he can find before he goes to his attack step. Here comes a town gossip monger that's going to give him a clue. It's going to pump his Thalia's lieutenant. Here's an expedition envoy. This is going to pump his Thalia's lieutenant. And is that? It's not going to be. It's eight damage, I think. 
have to imagine that Josh is just dead on board now. Yeah. That was the tenant's too big to be caught up in a sweeper. The Gideon is there anyway to make it so that, you know, really nothing is going to go Josh's way in this game. And Gideon's just going to untap that Valley's Lieutenant, and that is going to be game over. Smoked. Just turn five, attack you, you're basically dead. Yeah. Man, these human decks can come out of the gates, and I think that we all kind of have forgotten about that since the first couple of weeks mm -hmm. of Standard. Let's go ahead and take a hey, look when, at... When you say we, don't, uh, don't include me. I haven't, I haven't forgotten about these human decks. I, I think you might have a little. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the player sideboards. Uh, Tom has one Griff's Boon, three Handware Militia Captain, four Needle Spires, four Reckless Bushwhacker, a Silk Wrap, and two copies of Stasis Snare. What do you think he does here? I think that he may consider taking out some number of the Griff Spoons for the Silk Wrap and Stasis Snares. Uh, but honestly, I think if I were him, I would prefer just to have the Griff Spoons and basically make no changes to my deck. Uh, you know, in situations like this, like, if I'm Tom, I, I'm just usually going to assume that my opponent's not prepared for me and that I can just sort of keep doing what I'm doing and, and have it go well. You don't think that this is a matchup for the Needle Spires and the Bushwhacker? I don't think so. I think uh, the Needle Spires are basically for when um, you expect your opponent to have a lot of removal and the Reckless Bushwhackers are to make it so that you can rebuild after a Languish. So I like them against the, the heavy removal decks. But I don't think a Naya deck is really going to have that much removal. I think they're going to be looking to block more, and their removal is going to be a little on the clunkier side, like not quite as many sweepers. So I think that Tom is more likely to just want to jam a bunch of his you know, main deck threats and then just use a Griff Spoon or Declaration of Stone to kind of round out his threat base to make sure that it can finish Josh off. All right. Now on Josh's side, we have three Rending Volley, a Hidden Dragon Slayer, a Den Protector, a Clip Wings, a Chandra Flame Caller, two Dramokas Command, a Declaration in Stone, two Radiant Flames, a Gideon Ally of Zendikar, a Dragon Lord Dramoka, and a Hallowed Moonlight. What do we think comes in here? So the cards that jump out at me are the Rending Volleys, the Radiant Flames, the Chandra, and the Dragon Lord Dramoka. Um, the cards that I think can also come in are Declaration of Stone and Jermoka's Command. I don't like them quite as much. Um, Jermoka's Command is not always the best removal spell when you're behind or you have potentially smaller creatures. It can be a really big blowout, and like when I'm playing the um, the green-white tokens deck, I really like Jermoka's Command because you can kill always watching and maybe fight something. But Josh's deck, it's a little, like because it's three colors, it's a little slower and he um, uh, is more likely to be behind, not necessarily have the creature, and Jerkmoka's command can be a little awkward. So depending on how much he wants to take out, he might bring it in, but I think that the uh, the Rending Volleys, Raining Flames, Chandras, and Dragon Lords are gonna be like more than enough for him to bring in. I could see that. Now while our players are finishing up their sideboarding here as we go into game two, Let's take a quick second and look at this real sweet pre-release playmat for Eldritch Moon. It's a limited edition Eldritch Groove playmat with Lily Llama Vess. And uh, this is uh, something that, you know, you used to only be able to get this in Roanoke for our parody pre-release playmats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was um, planning a trip for the next pre-release. Yeah, well now you don't have to because these are going to be available at participating stores. So if you own a store and want to have these in your shop for the pre-release, or if you just want your LGS to have these for the pre-release, just have them go.starcitygames.com slash pre-release, and they can sign up and talk to starcitygames.com, get some of these in their shop for this limited edition playmat. All of these are really cool. I really liked all of the Dragons of Antarkir one. Yeah, they um, were really sweet. I really liked all the ones in Shadows over Innistrad. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is real sweet. Yeah, I, like, all the cool fun stuff that Star City makes is just like, you know, extra things that are all pretty awesome. Lily Llama Vess. Yeah. <clears throat> With her little snake dancers there. Mm -hmm. So as we go in here, game two, for those of you just joining us, Tom Ross uh, is on white red, hum right, white red Humans, currently up a game over Josh Grace on Naya Midrange. Josh is going to have a, you know, a decent start here with a Hidden Dragon Slayer. Oh, that's pretty sweet. He's just going to play it face up as a lifelinking creature. Joss, Tom does have a Town Gossip Monger on the battlefield, but does he really want to trade it and give Josh a life? 
You know, it's interesting too because uh, Tom may consider the implications of a card like Jamoka's Command. Um, so Tom may be thinking, you know, if I play a creature, do I want to flip my Tom Gossip Monger now? If I do, that means I'll have to tap my creatures, and that means that the Hidden Dragon Slayer would be able to get in for an attack, potentially. And, um, you know, it's definitely something to pause and consider. Well, it looks like we're not going to have an attack out of Tom. He is just going to play a Needle Spire, so it looks like he brought them in from the sideboard, and an Anointer of Champions. Josh is going to fire back with a Death Mist Raptor, so now Tom might not even want to flip that creature into... He's got to trade with that Death Mist Raptor at some point. Yeah, he is going to have to trade with it. Mm -hmm. and, that, yeah. and that Anointer will uh, let him you know, trade with it without having to sink any more mana into it. Yeah. Death Mist Raptor is not a card that we've seen a lot of lately. And Declaration of Stone is certainly the sort of thing you want to deal with it. Just get that thing exiled so it doesn't come back. All right, Declaration's going to get rid of it. It's going to give Josh a clue. He's going to attack in with his insided rabble. Anointer of Champions is going to pump it after no blocks. Three damage, going to take Josh down to 17. Tom's going to follow it up with a Kithion, Hero of Akros. And Josh is kind of in an awkward situation with this Hidden Dragon Slayer because um, blocking with it isn't really that great. Um, I guess threatening the block on the Anointer of Champions means that the Kithion won't be able to flip this turn, but he it can't really you know, run profitable blocks on anything else. Yeah, at, at this point I think it's probably just something where you save some damage, gain some life, uh, and then try and live to the point where you can use a sweeper like Radiant Flames or Tragic Arrogance. Yeah, but I mean so far it, it hasn't saved any damage or gained any life. Not yet. It can't yeah. attack, it can't block. Yeah. So it's been a, a little awkward. But we'll see what Tom does this turn. He does have the option to attack with um, the flipped incited. Uh, well, he does have to attack with incited rabble. Well, yeah, he, well, he has to. But um, he can also attack with the, the Kithion and threaten a, a pump into destructibility. So see what Tom wants to do here. Maybe he has something even like always watching. Mm -hmm or a, uh, just another declaration in stone. Always watching is really nice, because now he can just attack with everything. He can even attack with the anointer if he wanted. It's a 2-2 that can pump itself to a, be a 3-3. Yeah, so it looks like he's not going to attack with the, with the anointer. I wonder if he didn't attack with the anointer because he didn't want that Kithion to, tr to trigger. Maybe. I have to imagine that the Kithion trigger would be profitable for him, though. Hmm. So Josh is going to gain some life on the attack from that Hidden Dragon Slayer blocking. Maybe that Anointer um, specifically says other creature, and that's why he didn't uh, attack with it, but hmm. not 100% sure. Either way, this is one of the super, super fancy Nissa Vaswood Seers that are, yeah. you know, that, like, limited... San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah, that is not an altar. That is... One of the extra secret rare cards of Magic. <laughs> Ultra mega awesome rare. Yeah. So the cycle of Planeswalkers from Origins, you can get Nissa Vastwood Seer, black yeah, on that black thing is foil. So neat. It's real cool. It's not real easy to see, but we can kind of see the green. Mm -hmm. uh, so Nissa is going to get a forest decoration, and Stone is going to take care of that insided rabble. It's going to give Tom a clue. As if he needed one. He's already on one, of the, <laughs> on one of the good decks for the weekend. Yeah. So Josh is just going to pass the turn back. Uh, it's pretty important to note that that Death Mist Raptor is still in the graveyard for Josh. And at any point, he can just use a dem find a Dem Protector to get it back, and that's a lot of value. Yeah, the other thing, too, is Josh is at a pretty high life total, and Tom does not have much of a board. So this game's basically going the way that Josh wants it to. Um, like I said before, I think this matchup is pretty play draw dependent. So we may just see a match where Tom blows his opponent out when he's on the play. Josh blows Tom out when he's on the play. And then, you know, in the decider, just because Tom's on the play, he's going to kind of blow his opponent out. But we'll see. Well, it looks like the tap ability is not another creature because he just attacked and then mm -hmm. pumped his own anointer. Going to play out a couple more one drops that are now. Three yeah, twos. I wonder why uh, Tom didn't attack with it the previous turn. Kind of interesting. Yeah. I wonder if he just valued it really highly and didn't want to trade it with the Deathmist Raptor. 
All right, well, Josh is just going to cash in a clue on his turn. He finds uh, a, an expedition, I think, that that's a Canopy Vista. Uh, and just going to lay down a Sylvan Advocate. Let's see what else he's thinking about doing. Dramoka's command. So he did bring it in. Well, he must have taken out a lot of cards. Oh, so he's just going to he's going to put a counter on his Nissa and then fight with the Advocate. Do you like that over just getting rid of that always watching? Mm, I think I would have gotten rid of the always watching. It's just like too much power and toughness on the board. And it persists through sweepers. Yeah, that counter on the Nissa seems really irrelevant, especially considering he can just flip it next turn and make a 5-5. Yeah. I, I agree. But I'm sure Josh has a good reason for it. Maybe we'll ask him after the match. Tom's going to cash in his clue. He's got his silk wrap for that Sylvan Advocate. Now we've got these three twos that are crashing in. I like the idea of like diversifying the strength of your threats. So if Sylvan Advocate is like the one good creature that you have, it's nice to put the counter on the other creature. But um, yeah, well, I mean, jumping with the Nissa here could have. It's the exact same thing if he would have gotten rid of the always watching, right? Like right. it still could have chumped the two the two one. Well, well it, traded it, yeah, traded trade. the two one. So Josh is going to take three down to 13. So Tom's got to consider cards like Avacyn and Secure the Wastes in this position. Both of them would be utterly devastating for him, so we may see him just not play around them and attack anyway. Um, but I'm sure Tom's thinking about them. Looks like we've got another always watching. Mm -hmm. This is real important because he has two copies of Needle Spires in his deck. Next turn, he's going to be able to fire one up, and that's going to be a 3-3 three, three double, or a 4-4 four, four double strike. And I didn't see him tap on his creature or Josh's life total go down, so I think Tom actually respected the possibility of an Avacyn or Secure the Wastes there and didn't attack with his creature. Yep, he did not attack. Josh is going to use a Radiant Flames just to take care of that Expedition Envoy, and I think that we might see Needle Spires here get in for 8 damage. That's a yeah. lot for, for a land. Yeah, that is a lot for a land. This is not what Richard Garfield intended for Needle Spire, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, a Knight of the White Orchid is going to give him some value to get him another land. Now he can't activate that Needle Spire, so let's see if he has another card. Yeah, I have to imagine. Oh, he gets, oh, to, he's he gets to play a land for his turn. Nice. Activate Needle Spires, crash in. We are so silly for doubting Tom. So silly. We and it has he's vigilance, do the maximum so it damage. Doesn't, even doesn't even tap to attack. Mm -hmm. It's just like the best Celestial Colonnade ever. Yeah. So this is going to be a little tough for Josh. He was looking good for almost this entire game, but things seem to have fallen apart in these last couple turns. It looks like he's just kind of like out of action. Yeah. Yeah, I think that you know, using the Dromokos command to take care of the always watching um, and then that makes it so that you don't feel forced to block with your Nissa the following turn. Right. And then you can flip it with your sixth land. Yeah. I wonder if Josh just cut out a lot of his more expensive stuff in order to play. Well, Tragic Arrogance is going to give him back a 4-5 Sylvan. Yeah, which is kind of nice. Um, Tom still gets to just attack, activate Needle Spire. And attack. And... Uh, Needle Spire is going to have to trade with the Sylvan Advocate, which means the Knight of the White Orchid is going to get through. For three, and then Tom just has another Needle Spire behind it. Yeah. Ooh. Wow, well, he's just and Josh scoop it just up. concedes. Sounds like a pretty rough spot. I think that... Um, Josh probably just didn't have much going on in those last few turns. Things kind of fell apart. He saw the writing on the wall and just, you know, didn't want to play another turn. Well, Tom Ross, currently 11th on our leaderboard, but we all know he's number one in the heart. Mm. Uh, it's going to take this match 2-0 to zero over Josh Grace with his white-red humans deck. The battle of Needle Spires is going to go into the favor of Tom, the boss Ross. Uh, I do believe that we'll have a backup match that we can move to once once they're ready for us. And Tom did it without a leather jacket. I mean, it's a little hot down here, so I can understand yeah, I mean, he would, not, not bringing it, but... He would have to be a maniac to wear that leather jacket in this weather. I mean, he's... Yeah, but it's the leather jacket, dude. Granted, Come on. <laughs> granted Tom is a bit of a maniac. He 